In today's band lab video, we're going to start shaping our hi-hats. And then at the end, we'll mix down all of our tracks into audio files or stems. That way we can move on to adding the melodic instruments and vocals. Let's start adding our samples, plus icon, MIDI instruments. And we're gonna skip this stage because you know what it looks like by now. If not, refer back to our previous two videos. So I use the starring system in order to make it easier to isolate which ones I liked from the library and quickly try them out. Like we did before, after we've selected our samples that we're going to layer, we want to rename them and keep the sample kit name at the end. So it'll make it easier to find if we need to replace it. So I'm picking a sample for both the hi-hats open and the hi-hats closed. I'm going to use the MIDI hits from the clap as kind of a guide to figure out where I need to layer these hi-hats. I'll set the velocity all the way down. That way we won't hear the clap. We can just see where the notes were spaced previously. I'm thinking I might want to lead in to the clap. So have a hi-hat or even a hi-hat roll happen before it. Still having a little trouble moving things around. Just got to get used to it. All right, there's something to this. Found a decent spacing. Now I'm just trying to pepper in some off hits and see if any of that works. I'm also adding a little bit of variety by decreasing the velocity of some of the hits. Maybe later on when we're fine tuning, I might look into how to change the pitch of the MIDI notes. That way we have different velocities, but also different pitches that we can play with in our hi-hat rolls. So now that the hats are kind of working, let's take a look at the open hat. So now we can use the closed hi-hats as our guide for the open hi-hats. Again, bring down that velocity. We don't want to hear them, we just want to see them. Now for this open hit, it's really noticeable, so we're just going to try to find one place that it works. Alright, so the one at the end is working. Can we get another one in anywhere? Now we're going to gain stage that, make it sound good in relation to the other hats. We're getting into the EQ and trying to find the most important part of the open hi-hats, make that sound good, and then accentuate it with some distortion.
actually. Distortion wasn't working. Feedback killer didn't really add anything either. Maybe we'll try reverb? Studio reverb. Bring it down, take the effect off, and slowly start to mix it in. We don't want it to sound goofy, but we do want it to add volume and presence to the hi-hat. Now I'll focus on the closed hi-hats, work on the EQ as always, take it away, start to add it in, making sure to take the effect off, listen, add the effect back, see how it changed, and we'll try our usual feedback killer, BL driver distortion. And neither of those are working for the closed hi-hats either. So let's try that studio reverb, which doesn't quite work either. So let's leave this one without any effects other than EQ. Now I'll go through and gain stage all of our samples across the whole beat. I'm going to add some loops to each sample, but first I want a unique copy of that MIDI information because I want to edit the intro. I want to get rid of some hits and add some variety, but I want to make sure once we get to the loop, it still loops well. It takes a little too long, but copy and paste all of those MIDI regions. Make sure the loop still sounds good. Now let's start subtracting some hits. That clap snare hit right at the start, I never intended that to stay in. Take that out. But when it goes around in loops to that, that hit's going to sound good. Now I'm going to extend the loop to play for longer, and also make sure that I extend my red loop selection when we play through. Actually, first, I want to clean up that unused MIDI data that way it's easier to see what's going on with our samples. I'm curious just how many beats I can take off of those first couple seconds to make it hit even stronger. I just gotta use my ear here. It's not correct or incorrect. I 
I'm going to extend the loop even longer. And I almost always forget, but I got to extend that loop region as well by dragging it out. It's probably a good time to save this since I've made a good amount of changes. Unfortunately, every time I reopen the project, I've got to reset the loop region. Now I isolate the kick and the bass. Make sure those are in lockstep together. Now using the little cloud icon, which is my first time, we can save it. And if I click, oh, didn't have time. So we'll go back. And now I'm trying to figure out how to export the audio or download it. Oh, there we go. Download. I'm going to save this to the tablet. And I'll make sure to put our track name in there so I can keep tabs on where our files are. Now that I have a mix down for the 808, I'm going to go ahead and do that for the clap and snare, and also mix a third track for the hats. I want to create another project now because I want to make sure that we can always go back and edit that BandLab intro file if we need to edit the MIDI. Right now we're going to start a new one with just those audio tracks or audio stems so we can keep organized and also start to add more elements like melodic instruments and vocals. So this is actually the first time we've seen a waveform instead of MIDI data, which gives us some different options in adding effects now, but more importantly, we're cutting the number of tracks we have from six to three, which is gonna make it much easier to stay organized. And we still have the other project file to fall back if we need to make any really deep tweaks into the MIDI. Bring in the other two stems. As per usual, I want to name things while I'm going through it, keeping organized. Now I'll save this project. So we'll need to work on tightening up that loop. Something's happening with the hats where it added a little tail onto it. But now that we've got an organized project and we can go backwards if we need to, let's take the next step forward. 
In the next video, we're going to add a piano or a synth keyboard, maybe a little bit of guitar or electric bass. Try to round out the sound. Then we can move on to vocals. Thank you for checking out the video. I'll see you next time.